Hello friends and welcome to another episode of Tried and Tested. Today we'll be trying out some interesting snacks that we found at 7-Eleven. It's a store and more. Is it correct? Is this <laughs> an old... I don't know. Oh, it's not your era. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Chocolate lava cake. So here we have one that is very convenient and it's supposed to be very moist and rich and it's got a lot of really great reviews. So cute the box says, eat immediately after heating before your buddy does. <laughs> Very confident. Okay, so you have to heat up 20 to 25 seconds at home. Look at this. You could totally pass it off like you made it yourself. Oh. Ooh, there we go. Okay, okay. Yas, mama. It's so moist and like fudgy. Look at all this molten chocolate. Mmm. Oh, that is good. It is very moist and it's very chocolatey and there's so much chocolate lava that is in there. It's really quite decadent. I mean, I, I do feel that the cake is just a tad moist for my liking. Like, it's a little bit pudding-like, like a bit mushy but just very slightly. So some people might not like that but I, I still think that overall this is really good. I do feel the chocolate is a little bit like... Kind of reminds me of like Hershey syrup chocolate. You know what I mean? Like a little bit on the sweet side, a little bit like sugary, but it's not hugely noticeable. So price-wise, this is $3 and I think for $3, this is very good value for money. I would give this like an 8.5 out of 10. Yeah, very impressed. So a lot of people have been sharing about this matcha latte from 7-Eleven on TikTok and it's supposed to be like a dupe of the Starbucks matcha latte which is actually one of my favourite drinks. Uh, usually it's the uh, matcha soy latte. And uh, it's supposed to be really smooth and creamy. They said it's made from hand-picked tea leaves and skimmed milk and you can have it either hot or iced. We have the iced version here. So what happens is when you order it, you just take the cup from the freezer that already has ice in it, you go to the dispenser and you push the matcha latte option and it dispenses it. And it's actually quite theatrical because all this like steam comes out, I think because the milk is very hot and the ice is very cold. I'm excited to see how this tastes. Well, it's not bad. So to me, it tastes a little bit diluted and maybe like 30% sugar, if that makes sense. Like, so it doesn't feel um, very rich and gao. Even if I didn't have the Starbucks one as reference, I would still feel that this is a bit diluted. But like the matcha flavour is kind of there and there's a slight bitterness which is nice. It's not too sweet which is great. Overall, I would give this maybe a 6 out of 10. Honestly, like if I got this for $3, I might be a bit pissed. I just feel like I've had milky drinks in cans or bottles that have tasted maybe fuller than this so paying like $3, I wouldn't. Yeah. Okay, so maybe I'll make it up. Five la, five la. Okay, five. <laughs> have you ever wanted like a fizzy drink and also a coffee? So this is a batch blend Coke and they have different flavours like coffee and caramel and coffee and chocolate. This sounds fascinating. Um, I am very excited to try it. And the packaging, it just looks quite atas, yeah? It looks very atas and like for uh, a more, I'm guessing like an older crowd maybe. I don't really drink Coke, uh, but I used to so I do know what it tastes like. <laughs> And I can't drink coffee because it upsets my stomach but I think we'll just give this a shot and uh, we'll try it because it does sound delicious. I love the taste of coffee. I love the smell of coffee. Wow, the coffee smell is actually quite strong. Let's try this. Very interesting. This would be like a really great like cocktail combination. I think because Coke and Caramel have a flavour profile that are similar-ish and then uh, coffee is actually a really nice complement to that. I can taste all of the things. I can taste Coke, I can taste Caramel, I can taste coffee. It's like the Coke fizz without all of that sweetness because you have a bit more of the bitterness, you have a bit more of like uh, deeper notes, you have a bit like smoother caramelly notes. So this is no sugar and it does have a bit of that um, like the artificial sweetener taste, like slightly saccharine. Okay, come, let's try this one the coffee and chocolate. 
I can smell chocolate, but kind of smells a bit like artificial chocolate. The chocolate and coffee, I can barely taste it. It kind of still tastes like Coke, maybe with like a hint of coffee. And I feel like the aftertaste on this is a bit strange. It kind of tastes like a strange, like diluted and not, can't quite put your finger on it kind of Coke. If that makes sense. Yeah, it tastes diluted even though there are like more flavours in there. I'm not quite into this. I think this one does improve on the flavour of the Coke almost. I would give this a 2 out of 10. And I would give this a 7 out of 10. Oh, interesting idea. Who would have thought? Batch blend. So this is the Impossible Deluxe Burger from 7-Eleven and they are the very first convenience store chain to have this in Asia. Now this is a recipe from the 7-Eleven in-house chef and inside we have a Impossible meat patty and then there's also sautéed baby spinach, mozzarella cheese, sautéed mushroom, sour cream and lemon zest. Mmm, sounds good. I don't know if you guys have heard of Impossible Foods, but they are like a company that does plant-based products that really taste and look like meat. I have tried, I think maybe one time, I think it was like meatballs or something, and it did quite taste like meat. But there was something just a little bit different, like an aftertaste or like the texture was like a bit different from like meat meat. But it was very impressive for like a plant-based option. So for this one, you just need to pop me in the microwave. For like standard microwave ovens, it's about a minute, 15 seconds. All right, let's try this out. The bun is quite nice and fluffy. Well, we do see like some spinach in there. It's not a lot. And one mushroom? <laughs> How many mushrooms are on this side? Very few mushrooms, but that's all right. I, I'm okay with that. So let's try this out. Mmm. It totally tastes like a regular burger. Like, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. It tastes like meat and it tastes like very salty processed meat. It's a tasty burger. So this Impossible Deluxe Burger is $5.90. Their regular burgers are about like 2 to $3, which is about half the price of the Impossible Burger. Actually, I do think that $5.90 for a convenience store burger is quite expensive, but I mean, Impossible Foods are usually a little bit more expensive than uh, the, the meat options that we have. I do feel it kind of targets a very specific demographic, which is like the vegetarian who is looking for something convenient to eat and unfortunately there aren't very many options around. I mean even in regular restaurants, what I hear from my vegetarian friends is it's very hard to find options that are tasty. In terms of that, I guess it's a good thing that they have an option for vegetarians. Mm, yeah, a little bit, a little bit on the pricey side. Yeah, so I mean overall I think I would give this like a, I guess maybe an 8 out of 10. I wonder if there was a way for them to bring the price down. <laughs> No, just because I mean, you know what I mean, like, yeah, it's a bit expensive. <laughs> because I mean, that's also more expensive than some of the burgers at like, our fast food chains. You know what I mean? And it's like convenience store food. But I think overall, it tastes good. Like, I can't tell that it's not meat. Yeah. And it's tasty, I mean. It's a tasty burger. So here we have a sandwich version of onde onde. Onde onde is a traditional type of kueh. It's a glutinous rice ball and inside there is like molten palm sugar, gula malacca and it's coated with grated coconut. Ooh, so cute! It's a lot softer than I thought it would be. Ah, there's actually very little filling. Like at the edges, it's just all bread. Let's see if it's the same on the other side though. Uh, it's kind of the same. It's uh, looking slightly disappointing at the moment, but it's okay. I mean, let's still give this a shot. It's alright. Okay, so the bread is very soft. It kind of reminds me of, um, you know, like the very old school, colourful, fluffy bread that they have with like kaya toast, but like much thinner and compressed. I mean, it's very green, but doesn't taste like pandan, or at least not noticeably to me anyway. The gula malacca on the inside is like barely noticeable. I mean, it's sweet, but it's not really like noticeable. I mean, you know, I understand 7-Eleven food, but actually my standards for 7-Eleven food quite high because in general, I really do like 7-Eleven food. So I feel like this is like a bit of a letdown and it's $2.30. For a very small like sandwich, I would have expected like the inside to be a bit more filled or like just have a bit more flavour or something. $1 is acceptable. $2.30 for this, is, I don't think it's like acceptable. I think I would give this like maybe a 2 out of 10. Interesting idea with the green and the gula malacca inside and the shredded coconut on top, like good effort. But like it, the taste is no. 
So this is a Ribena jelly drink. So Ribena has been around for such a long time. It's really nice to see them come out with like different versions of it. Like it comes out in candy forms. Then you have like sparkling Ribena, which is like super delicious. It's supposed to be like super rich in vitamin C. Now that's something that I've never really believed. But anyway, now we have this Ribena jelly drink and I love jelly drinks. So let's see how this tastes. So is this to shake and squeeze? So the jelly isn't coming out, I think because it has to be like sucked out through this hole so I'm gonna try and drink it from here first and then later we just try and squeeze out some jelly. Mm, the jelly is quite nice. It's a little bit like uh, Ayu jelly, like soft fruity jelly. So there's still quite a lot of jelly in here and I do kind of like that the jelly has a firmness about it that is not just like blah, 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 blah. The Ribena tastes, I think, a bit more like the Ribena pastels than Ribena Ribena, if that makes sense. Flavor wise, it kind of tastes a bit more peachy to me, I don't know why, or like fruity or something. As you can see, the colour is like actually quite different from Ribena. It's like not even like a lighter version of Ribena, it's like a different colour almost, like a bit more orange peach kind of colour. Overall, it's a really fun drink. I think I would give this a 8.5 out of 10 as well. Yeah. Alright, we've come to the end of the episode. If you want to find out more about the products and where we got them from, 7-Eleven, you can check out our links in the description box down below or you can go to our Tried and Tested Facebook page. You can also join our Telegram channel. Then we can Telegram you. And if you've already subscribed to the channel, thank you very much. Now all you need to do is hit that bell and be notified every time a new video comes out onto YouTube or you can just download our Click Network app. Alright, till next time, go be beautiful.